In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use the if-else blocks to allow the computer to make decisions. I'll also go over a common mistake that people make when they're using these blocks. On this YouTube channel, I make coding tutorial videos just like this one, so if you're new here, please consider subscribing to help the channel out. As you gain more coding experience, you'll likely want to create scenarios where the computer does one thing if a condition is true, or another if it's not true. Most of us do this all the time as humans. If we have school today, we wake up earlier than usual, let's say at 6 o'clock in the morning. In computer science, this scenario is known as a conditional. If the condition is true, that we have school, then we wake up at 6 a.m. We could also add another clause to handle what happens if the condition is not true using else. So if we have school is false, we'll wake up at 10 a.m. instead. We'll skip any statements inside of the if clause because that's not true. As a flow diagram, an if else looks like this. A is the condition that we're checking, and either B or C will be the next step. Let's create a simple scratch example. Let's say that we want our sprite to move 10 steps if the right arrow key is pressed. So I'm going to go over to the control palette, and I'm going to bring in an if block. Now I need to check my condition, if the right arrow key is being pressed. And that block can be found in the sensing palette. And it has this hexagonal shape, which fits nicely into the if statement. Now I have to make sure that I'm looking for or checking to see if the right arrow key is pressed. And then I'll go into the motion palette and move 10 steps. Now as written, this block doesn't really work because my computer doesn't know when to check the conditional. So let's have it run when the green flag is clicked. Now when I click on the green flag and I press the right arrow, nothing happens. This is a common issue I notice students and adults encounter when they're using conditionals. The computer actually is checking the conditional, but it's only checking it immediately when the green flag is pressed. So if I were to hold down the right arrow key and then press the green flag, you'll notice the sprite moves. In order to have the computer checking continuously, I could throw it inside of a forever block. So I'm going to go into the control palette and bring all of this into a forever block. So now when I click on the green flag, the computer is constantly checking to see if that condition is true. And when it is true, it's going to move the sprite. I could also add another if statement inside of this forever block to check to see when the left arrow key is pressed and move negative 10 steps if that's true. One thing to keep in mind is that having lots of forever blocks can make your project very resource hungry. And what I mean by that is that now the computer has to check the condition over and over and over again, as long as it's running. And that's not a very efficient way of doing things. If we have our program running on a phone, tablet, or laptop, it's going to require more energy and the battery life is going to suffer as a result. But I wanted to show you one example of using a conditional inside of a forever block to accomplish this task. If you're interested and want to check out a more advanced video that I made on this subject for an AP Computer Science curriculum, check it out by clicking on the card above. Thanks for watching. If you found this video to be helpful, I'd appreciate it if you hit the thumbs up button, and I'll see you next time.